Hello everyone, well this worldwide health crisis seems to be dragging on for quite a long time and our initial thoughts of protecting users seems to have been in the wrong place so we thought about the phishing threat, malicious emails, all on the very topical subject and yes there was quite a few of those. Saw some early on, not so much later on but yeah, there's one avenue we didn't explore of uh, users not being able to contact their local IT representative. And why might they need to contact them? For advice. Advice on installing software. Because they've lost that easy point of contact whilst working at home, they've uh, decided to install software from wherever they can find a file. So in this video, we're going to talk about installing software from unofficial locations. Now it's very easy with Linux, we have software repositories and mobile phones have the same thing. But with Windows, well, the software store isn't exactly that good still in Windows 10. Better than they've used to have, but not perfect. And we find a lot of users revert back to old habits of find an executable file from wherever. Now let's say I wanted to download VLC Media Player. Well, would you know the website is called videoland.org. Unfortunately, one of our German users failed and uh, went to the website vlc.de. So what happened to his computer? Well, we had a lot of antivirus alerts. So anything in red is an alert, a file being quarantined, something bad happening to the computer. The bigger the red circle, the more activity there has been for the day. Now, as much as I absolutely love this antivirus product, um, it is from Cisco, but it's not something that you as a home user could go and buy. It is more of an enterprise thing, an enterprise product that uh, no doubt costs a small fortune. Well, actually, I know all these products that I use cost a small fortune. And uh, put it this way, if, if the company could pay me the money we pay for our software, for our security tools, then uh, I would be mortgage free and have a very nice car. Instead, I'm paid a... Uh, small peanuts in equivalent. <laughs> but anyway, I thought it would be a, a change to show you these things. And I'll show you as much as I can. I've had to redact a lot of information here. This is other software we have on the computer and it is completely unrelated and we also have to protect the innocent. So this uh, malicious activity appears on the user's computer, but it's not obvious where it comes from. In fact, it was a bit of a tough one to work out. Anyway, I backtracked the activity and uh, happened to find out that the user had installed VLC. But looking at his internet activity, found no visits to videoland.org. As I mentioned though, there was the website vlc.de, which was visited on the 19th of April at 12.39 UTC. And at 12.43 UTC on the 19th of April, we can indeed find that VLC version 3.0.9.2 was run and ended up in the home folder app data local. So this was actually a malicious version of VLC. But you'll notice here, this is the 19th of April. All our malware alerts started on the 29th of April. So this hung dormant for 10 days before doing anything. The average antivirus checker really would be hard pushed to work this one out. It's only because we can navigate the file trajectory and this was actually a manual effort to go back and work out what exactly had happened. We can get retrospective alerts here, but uh, this one was a manual effort. Our next example came from a user downloading Inkscape. They've just released version one. I do need to try that out, but yeah. Anyway, back to the subject. So the website for Inkscape is inkscape.org. The user was absolutely adamant that they had downloaded the correct file from Inkscape. And looking at our downloads here, we can find quite a nice selection. Unfortunately, what the user had done though was downloaded the .msi file. Now our company has to comply with the cyber essentials and uh, if anyone else has uh, ever done this for their company, then uh, you'll probably know what a pain it is. But one of the items of cyber essentials is that users should not be able to run a file that they've just downloaded from the internet in one click. You have to find some way of slowing it down that's one of those really annoying things I found in Windows that they say, do you want to run this file? Yeah, obviously, and just because I downloaded it, I still want to run it. Anyway, because of that, the user decided that they weren't able to run that version and instead found one from somewhere else. And uh, 
this was the result of their alternate find. Inkscape version 0.92.5, slightly older than they were running from the website. So that attempted to attack the Windows kernel. Now you really don't want any applications touching the kernel. The kernel is your no-no square. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that, should I? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we have an attack prevented on the kernel32.dll, blah, blah, blah. File signed by HNV Media Limited. Hmm. Now I'm fairly certain that Inkscape don't sign their files as that. But what happened next? What happened next? Well, it started making a connection to the website staging.berkitet-nighthole.com. And I've redacted the IP address there because what happened is uh, the website was recognized as being malicious by our DNS provider and that was going through a sinkhole IP. So I, I didn't want anyone attacking the IP that was shown on the screen here. It, that's irrelevant. But the fact is that uh, that connection was attempted by the quote unquote Inkscape installer. And looking at the user's browsing history, we can indeed see that they went on inkscape.org and then for some utterly bizarre reason, they went on this website here called filehorse.com. I should mention this is a very shortened history for their internet access. I've just shown the information relevant for this video. Anyway, filehorse.com, what is that? I'm sure that is a very legitimate site. Nothing like file hippo, is it? And they do serve Inkscape from there. Unfortunately, the version changed through the day when I was looking at this, uh, but I did run a copy of it through our interactive sandbox. Another Cisco product. I really do like this one as well. Interactive in that I can uh, run a web session and the malware does not realize it is a virtual machine. It's clever how they've done it. Anyway, we can see that uh, that was a completely different file name that said badreg.exe. <laughs> not even Inkscape. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. Well, why would you run that? Why? And it's been flagged as malware by multiple antivirus vendors on heuristics and it's recognized as adware or potentially unwanted application. Hmm. Don't think there's much else relevant in this, um, but just scrolling down to this. File here, shell experience host. Now I randomly did a Google search for that. Well, it's not a Google search, is it? <laughs> DuckDuckGo search. Shell experience host uh, can be related to Monero miners and Trojans. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right, very legitimate. And it's recognized as malicious by 22 vendors. And it's got the name here, BudReg. <laughs> You'd think I'd install the wrong thing, but you know, <laughs> plain as day there, Inkscape. <laughs> So that is some of the problems we've been dealing with, most likely because users don't have that easy point of contact to their local IT team. Now, unfortunately, when they have to have a conversation with the cybersecurity team, that is just never as good. We're trying to do what we can to avoid having to do a full reinstall of computers because this is the route we really want to take for getting rid of malware. I think in the two samples that I've showed you here, this has had to be the eventual conclusion that laptops have had to be shipped out to users and they're systems rebuilt. So that is all quite a faff at the moment, as you can uh, appreciate in this current climate. I'm sure there will be uh, more of this to come, and I do hope our antivirus product does better jobs at uh, quarantining things and not just uh, picking it up later. My final advice is make sure that what you're downloading is where it should have come from. Use an internet search engine, make sure you're going to the right place, make sure it is the company or developer who is involved in the creation of that software. Don't use things like this. Even File Hippo I'd be dubious of. No. Go to the original source. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. <laughs>